Good afternoon. Welcome to this evening's Bible study for New Macedonia Baptist Church in Newport, Kentucky. I'm Pastor Randall Baker. Glad to have you with us. Today we'll be on Numbers chapter 28, beginning in verse 1. We'll, as usual, read a block of text, and then we will uh, go back through and try to explain and talk about it a bit, see what God will give us out of it. Um, before we begin, though, I would like... Uh, to remind you that you could send in uh, any love offering, any gift, anything for the church, the ladies club, the missionaries, the uh, Sunday school, whatever you'd like it to go for, just send in the P.O. Box 151 Alexandria, Kentucky 41001. Thank you for it. Some uh, people and things we just like for you to pray about is uh, the family of Sue Stamper. Sue Stamper died, I believe, on Sunday night from complications of diabetes, and just ask you to pray for her family, uh, for comfort for them. Uh, I don't know the uh, uh, arrangements yet, so we'll, we'll probably get them on the church page, if you can go to the New Macedonia Baptist Church uh, church page on Facebook. Uh, as soon as we get those, we'll be, we'll be able to post those, and you'll see that. Also, pray for C.A. Griffith. He did get some pretty good news from his doctor uh, on Tuesday that his... Uh, uh, leukemia hasn't gotten any worse, so need, no need for treatment yet. Uh, but keep him in your prayers. He's still having some heart issues, some uh, uh, diabetes issues, and of course the cancer itself. Pray also for uh, Geneva Harold, who uh, has a broken arm and, and some other issues going on. Keep her in your prayers. Uh, pray for uh, uh, my niece, uh, Terry, and her family. Uh, her husband Kevin, they all have have COVID, and they all uh, well. She has been in the hospital for a while, uh, but is back home now. But doing better, I think. Uh, pray for their family. Pray for uh, uh, Elsie Turner, who uh, has some uh, skin cancer issues going on that seem to be getting better. But uh, thank God for what He's done for, and ask Him to continue to pray for. Uh, pray for uh, my sister uh, Sylvia. Pray for my brother William, uh, who uh, uh, was supposed to have a, a procedure done on his leg, but they were not able to do that because of some complications, hardening of the arteries and some calcium buildups. And they discovered he had an aneurysm, which uh, they need to deal with. Uh, and, and he had a, I haven't found out yet what the doctor told him on Tuesday that they will be doing to, to uh, remedy that. But keep him in your prayers that God would be merciful to him. Also pray for uh, Lucy Mays, um, uh, Nancy Combs, and pray for Charles Mays, who uh, has, a, has another uh, surgery coming up, I think, for, uh, for uh, prostate. And pray for John and Faye Little. Uh, I think they're not in too bad of health, but other things going on right now. Pray for them, bless, that God would bless them. Uh, Pray for Truman Turner and his family. Pray for all the widows, all the widowers uh, in our church and all over the country and, and wherever they might be that God would protect them and bless them. Pray for the old and infirmed, anyone sick of whatever they, whatever they are sick of. Bless, uh, sick from rather. Bless our church. Ask a blessing on our church rather that God would bless it, that it would be continue to be a lighthouse to the community and those round about it. And, uh, and just pray that God would keep us uh, under his wing as he, as he wanted to do with, with Jerusalem. Ask, pray that he would keep us under his wing and just teach us what he'd have us to do and what he'd have us to be and, and, and just get blessings on our church. Bless, of course, uh, more importantly, all of the loss, that they might see the light before it is everlasting too late. Let's go ahead and open in a word of prayer. Heavenly Father, we thank you, Lord, for all the things that you do for us. Thank you for the many, many blessings that you have uh, bestowed upon us, Lord. And, and thank you for what you will do for us. Just ask you to bless those prayer requests that were mentioned earlier, Lord. Thank you for those that you have that you have helped in whatever way you've helped them in, through healing, Lord, or, or just made them feel uh, better. Continue to do that, Lord. Continue to comfort and be with them. Bless them. Heal them all, Lord, with, with good health and, and a complete, complete recovery, Lord. We thank you for it. Ask you to continue to bless and be with our church, Heavenly Father. Bless us that uh, we would stay uh, just as you would have us to be, Lord, and that we would do all things according to your perfect will, Lord. 
We ask that you continue to bless and be with us in all things that we do. Lord, give us that desire to read and study your word. Bless this uh, 28th chapter of Numbers as we go through it. Lord, bless our reading of it. Bless our understanding of it. Increase our knowledge if it be your will, Lord. And we ask all things according to your perfect will. And we'll give you all the glory, all the praise, and all the honor. In your Christ Jesus' name we do pray. And amen. I did forget to mention also, if you're praying for... Uh, uh, those around you and those uh, that are in need. Pray for my sister Sylvia uh, also that uh, God would bless her. And as I said, we're going to be in Numbers chapter 28 here, beginning in verse 1, and we'll read uh, verses 1 through 8, and then we'll go back and take a look at what we read. It says in uh, 28, Numbers 28, 1, And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, Command the children of Israel, and say unto them, My offering and my bread for my sacrifice and made my fire for a sweet savor unto me shall ye observe to offer unto me in their due season and thou shalt say unto them this is the offering made by fire which ye shall offer unto the lord two lambs of the first year without spot day by day for a continual burnt offering and one lamb shalt thou offer the one lamb rather shalt thou offer in the morning and the other lamb shalt thou offer at even and a tenth part of an ephah of flour for a meat offering mingled with the fourth part of an hen of beaten oil it is a continued burnt offering which was ordained in mount sinai for a sweet savor a sacrifice made by fire unto the lord and the drink offering thereof shall be the fourth part of an hen for the one lamb in the holy place shalt thou cause the strong wine to be poured unto the Lord for a drink offering and the other lamb shalt thou offer at the even at even as the meat offering of the morning and as the drink offering thereof thou shalt offer it a sacrifice made by fire of a sweet savor unto the Lord now we uh, uh we're reading in this last chapter, chapter 27, uh, that we read about some instructions uh, as to the new generation. It was given instructions to the new generation, actually in 26 and 27, some things it was telling them about Israel. Because uh, all of the old generation, except, of course, Joshua and Caleb, and at this point, still Moses, they were dead. Moses had also been told of his impending death, that he should climb the mountain, and then he'd be able to see the... Uh, the promised land, but that he would not be able to enter it because of his disobedience. Uh, the generation that was left alive would be the ones, they would be the ones that take the land promised to their fathers as an inheritance. And that would, of course, also be with uh, Joshua and Caleb. But the last generation uh, had been given these commandments uh, as how and when to sacrifice and what to do. And they had been given that on Mount Sinai. And that was almost 40 years ago, maybe 40 years ago. Uh, and that had been given earlier to that previous generation, the ones that were left in slavery, uh, that had left slavery, rather been rescued from slavery uh, by God through Moses in, in Egypt. And now the Lord spoke to Moses to command the new generation how to give the offerings uh, of lamb, goats, and bullocks, and the things they were to offer, along with the bread, the offerings, and the drink offerings. Now, you will notice uh, when the offerings are given, they are given as a bread offering, along with, rather, a bread offering and a drink offering. In Colossians 2.16, we can read about the Apostle Paul was telling the Colossians, that they were no longer under the law. He was explaining that to them and that after they were saved, they're no longer under the law. And this chapter in Numbers, that's one of the things he was referencing here. These commandments that were given here is some of the things that he was referencing to them when he said this, let no man therefore judge you in meat or in drink or in respect of an holy day or of a new moon or of the Sabbath days. Now we're going to we talk, we'll talk about a lot about those, all of those things in this chapter. The first sacrifice uh, that we're going to talk about here was, uh, was the one of the two lambs. And those always, of course, those are, are as we know about that, they're, they're to be without spot or blemish. You have the first year. And, uh, and the reason the Colossians and all the Christians were told 
not to have to keep these sacrifices anymore or these holy days. It was explained in Colossians 2.17 when he said this. Uh, Apostle Paul said this, which are a shadow of things to come, but the body is of Christ. So in other words, all of those sacrifices, all of these feasts, all these things were symbolic of Jesus Christ and what he, what he would do, what his life, what his uh, on earth and particularly his death and his sacrifice uh, was for all mankind. In this chapter, it refers to uh, to about 36 to 100, and we'll, we'll talk about that a little bit later on too, of, of different a, or animals that are sacrificed, not different animals, but different sacrifices for the holy days uh, and uh, for uh, what they would do for, for, uh, you know, for their personal sins. They had to sacrifice things for their personal sins and for an atonement sometimes, the Bible calls it an atonement sacrifice. Now, all these hundreds of sacrifices done each year and, and maybe thousands, I'm sure it'll be thousands by this, they were, they were replaced by Jesus Christ and his one-time sacrifice. These sacrifices of lambs, bulls, and goats, the Bible says it could never take away the sin. It can never take away sin. All it did was just cover it for a little while. But Jesus, Jesus' one sacrifice, just his one sacrifice took away all the sins of all those that would believe. The Bible says that was he was sacrificed once and for all. He was sacrificed once and for all. The sacrifices in Numbers 28 verses 1 through 8 that we just read, they were to be offered along with flour, which was known as the meat offering, and a drink offering of strong wine. And it talks about the different uh, amounts that were to be given. An ephah, it mentions that. An ephah was equal to about one bushel. And it talks about a hen. And a hen, H-I-N, not H-E-N, but H-I-N, a hen was equal to about one and one half gallons. So since meat, bread, and drink was offered each time, I'm sure it was representing a feast to or for God, a feast that was given for God, because God says it was for a sweet savor. And you know, when you got a meal cooking and you can smell a meal cooking, that's a pretty sweet savor to you. That's a pretty good smell, and it gets you all ready to eat. Verses 9 and 10 says this, And on the Sabbath day, two lambs of the first year without spot, and two tenth deals a flour for a meat offering mingled with oil and a drink offering thereof. This is the burnt offering of every Sabbath beside the continual burnt offering and his drink offering. So a special sacrifice uh, was to be done on each Sabbath day, and that was to be of two lambs, of two lambs of the first year without spot or blemish as always. And these lambs without spot or blemish was of course to represent or to be symbolic of Jesus Christ's sin, sinlessness, that he had never committed sin, that he was perfect and sinless. And these were to be done in addition, this was done to be also uh, of, the, of the lamb that's offered morning and night in the drink offerings and, and meat offerings. And they would also be with flour and with the drink offering. Uh, verses 11 through 15 says this, And in the beginning of your months you shall offer a burnt offering unto the Lord, two young bullocks and one ram, seven lambs of the first year without spot, and three tenth deals of flour for a meat offering, mingled with oil for one bullock, and two tenth deals of flour for a meat offering, mingled with oil for one ram. And a several tenth deal of flour mingled with oil for a meat offering with unto one lamb, for a burnt offering of a sweet savor and a sacrifice made by fire unto the Lord. And their drink offering shall be half a hen of wine unto a bullock, and the third part of a hen upon her, unto a ram and a fourth part of a hen unto a lamb. This is the burnt offering of every month throughout the months of the year. And one kid of the goats for a sin offering unto the Lord shall be offered beside the continual burnt offering and his drink offering. So at the start, at the start, or at the first of each month, of every each and every month, there was supposed to be uh, two young bulls, two young bullocks, um, one ram, and then there's a male goat, and then uh, seven 
one year old or seven lambs of the first year along with the flour which is the meat offering and the drink offering they were all to be uh, offered along with and not instead of but as well as those two lambs that were offered one in the morning and one in the evening with their drink offerings the amount of flour and drink that is to be offered with each one is also given and along with these there was to be a kid you know, which is a which is a baby goat, and that's to be offered uh, each time with the uh, at the first of each month as a sin offering, as a, as offering up for their own sin. A lot of these other things were done as to show their gratitude toward God, toward their love for God, and their and their, and their gratitude toward Him. Verses uh, six thirteen through twenty five says this: and in the fourteenth day of the first month is the Passover of the Lord. And in the fifteenth day of this month is the feast. Seven days shall unleavened bread be eaten. In the first day shall be an holy convocation. You shall do no manner of servile work therein. And you shall offer a sacrifice made by fire for a burnt offering unto the Lord. Two young bullocks and one ram and seven lambs of the first year. They shall be unto you without blemish. And their meat offering shall be of flour mingled with oil. Three tenth deals shall you offer for a bullock, and two tenth deals for a ram. A several tenth deal shalt thou offer for every lamb throughout the seven lambs, and one goat for a sin offering to make an atonement for you. Ye shall offer these beside the burnt offering in the morning, which is for continual burnt offering. After this manner ye shall offer daily. Throughout the seven days, the meat of the sacrifice made by fire of a sweet savor in the Lord. It shall be offered before the continual, beside rather, the continual burnt offering and his drink offering. And on the seventh day, ye shall have an holy convocation. You shall do no servile work. So at the start or the first day, oops, sorry. Uh, on the 14th day of the first month, they celebrated the Passover. They celebrated the Passover, and the Passover, as you remember, uh, or as you all know, was when God sent his death angel to kill the firstborn of each one of the Egyptians. But he passed over the Israelites. Uh, all they had to do was just kill a lamb and uh, strike the blood on the doorposts and the death angel would pass over them, and that's where we get the name Passover. The first month, uh, doesn't correspond to our January, the first of our first of the year, but it, uh, it, it more corresponds with our uh, months of, of March and April, kind of between those two months. Their month was called Nisan, N-I-S-O-N. And on the 15th of Nisan, they begin the feast. They would begin to eat the feast. They would have the, the, the thing would start on the 14th, but on the 15th of Nisan, they would begin the feast. And they would begin it with seven days of eating unleavened bread, uh, representing their haste to, to, uh, in leaving Egypt. But they had to leave in a hurry. They were not able to wait for the bread to rise, so they did an unleavened bread. It was also with bitter herbs to represent the bitterness of the slavery. But they were not to do any of the regular work that they did each and each day. Uh, that was either farming or working on their crops, uh, working on or repairs to their, to their homes or businesses or anything like that, or any kind of business dealings. If they were a businessman, they couldn't do any of that work. So any of their regular work, they couldn't be done. It was to be a holy convocation. Now we know that holy is something that's set aside, and, and particularly when you're speaking of holy in the Bible, you're talking about uh, being good, being a, a sinless or, or like God is holy, being very good. Sinless is probably not a good word, but, but uh, good is really a, a good word. As we do know that God is totally sinless though. And a convocation, just the word convocation is just a large assembly or a large group of people that come together for a certain kind of cause. So uh, on a holy conv convocation, uh, it was so the people, they could all gather together in one big group and that they could go there to worship God for a holy convocation. They'd go there to do the service to God or God's service. They were to offer two young bullocks, one ram, and seven lambs of the first year, which were, as always, to be without blemish, without spot, which without blemish, and they were to be offered with flour uh, mingled with oil, that, that of course is known as the meat offering, as we as we uh, mentioned earlier. And uh, more flour was to be offered for the bulls and for with the rams. 
and even more flour was to be offered with the with the lambs because of course there were more of them and also a goat after this was to be offered for a sin offering and verse 24 uh, looks like it says that each day of the celebration they were to offer these whole things to offer two more young bullocks one more ram and seven more lambs and that would be a total of 70 animals aside from the morning and evening sacrifices of the sin offering that would bring it up to 85 animals in one week it certainly shows one thing about God. It shows that he was blessing the Israelites with herds and flocks, that he was, that he was giving them these good ones, uh, that they, were to, they could find all of these animals without spot or blemish, these animals in perfect condition to offer. And uh, we know that the massive amounts were offered sometimes when the, when the tabernacle, when the temple was all uh, uh, consecrated and, and uh, made holy. They offered thousands, thousands of lambs and, and goats and, and sheep and bullocks and stuff for, uh, to, to, clear, to cleanse and purify that temple. And the offering, of course, as we know, it probably represented a type of tithing to God. You gave that, you had to give the best. When you, when, when you can't just give whatever you, don't, what you, whatever you don't want or whatever you didn't like, you had to give the best to God. He won't accept second best. Verses to finish this up, verses 26 through 31 says this, Also, in the day of the first fruits, when you bring a new meat offering unto the Lord, after your weeks be out, you shall have an holy convocation, you shall do no servile work, but you shall offer the burnt offering for a sweet savor unto the Lord. Two young bullocks, one ram, seven lambs of the first year, and their meat offering of flour mingled with oil, three tenth deals unto one bullock, two tenth deals unto one ram, a several tenth deal unto one lamb throughout the seven lambs, and one kid of the goats to make an atonement for you. You shall offer them beside the continual burnt offering and his meat offering. They shall be unto you without blemish and their drink offering. So the, the day of the first fruits, and what that is, is that's when you first get your crop in out of the field, particularly wheat is in this case, I think. Wheat and they, uh, the first batches of wheat that you get, you would have to hold up as an offering to God. So that was the, the uh, feast of the first uh, fruits. That's what you did. That's what's considered the first fruits, the harvest, the wheat harvest. And on that day, were the, they were to offer again two young bullocks, one ram and seven uh, lambs. Uh, one year old lamb and along with that they were to have the flour which was the meat offering and they were to have for each one a certain amount as it said on there and they were also to be in addition to the morning and to the evening sacrifices and they were also to offer a goat a goat for their atonement which is their sin offering the same thing now some people might say uh, that hey that is pretty cruel to offer all those and kill all those animals you know, we don't think it's too cruel to go and have a hamburger or to have uh, some kind of lamb meat or one of those gyro or gyro sandwiches. Uh, we don't think anything's wrong with that. Uh, but sometimes when we give stuff to God, we think, oh, what a waste. But you know, we're supposed to do righteousness before we do our own uh, hunger and thirst, before we satisfy our own. Uh, so God made all those things. If God asked for a sacrifice of them, it's only right that he should have them. and should have them exactly as he should have them. Now, a lot of the times in there it was seven, and you know seven is the number of completion. Even all those uh, things at one time we, we, we added up as to 70, to be 70 animals. And that is, of course... Uh, Divide, uh, seven divided into 70 10 times so uh, you know God does everything perfect so this is just, that's to show that this sacrifice was perfect there was nothing wrong with it it was perfect and it was uh, you know marvelous as all things are in, in God's eyes well that uh, that finishes up here our, our Bible study for the day thank you for joining us along with it and remember to keep those ones in prayer that we mentioned earlier of Sue Stamper's family of uh, C.A. Griffith of, uh, of Elsie and uh, Geneva, William, <coughs> Sylvia, and, and any others, Truman and his family, John and Faye, and there. Keep them in your mind when you go to prayer to God. Keep all those in your mind and ask a special blessing on them. Ask God's mercy on them. Let's go ahead and close in a word of prayer. Heavenly Father, we thank you, Lord, for this 28th chapter of Numbers, and we ask you to, to 
to just bless, Lord, our understanding of it and remembrance of it. Thank you for it, Lord. Thank you for giving it to us. Thank you for, for showing us these examples that you, uh, that you did for us, Lord, with the, with the people of Israel and, and the things that happened in the Bible. Thank you, Lord, for giving us those examples that we, we don't have to go through all those things ourselves, but, Lord, that we can just look at it and we can see that it's all, all there to glorify you, Lord, that it all, that it all of it represents Jesus Christ and his perfectness, his sinlessness, and, uh, and how we should uh, appreciate that we should be grateful, Lord, as the, as the uh, uh, Israelites gave all that to back to you, God, which came from you originally, that we should also, Lord, give back to you in some form, some way. We thank you for it, Lord. We ask you to continue to bless us, continue to give us that desire to learn and study your word as we should and as we ought, Lord, which is just our reasonable service. That's all it is, just reasonable. We we'll thank you for it. We'll give you all the glory, all the praise, and all the honor in Jesus Christ's name. We do pray. Amen.